The Monsterverse, a cinematic kaiju universe that pitted Godzilla and Kong, the two biggest movie monsters of all time, in a rematch 60 years in the waiting, and have come to the conclusion that the Monsterverse is not that good. Now, I'm not going into more detail about my dislike on the Monsterverse, as I've already covered that in my last video. If you haven't seen part 1, I recommend you watch that first, so you can get an understanding of my frustrations with the Monsterverse, from the consistent issues across all the four films, my issues with certain fans of the Monsterverse, and my hopes and concerns for the future of the franchise. For the rest of you, I'm going to discuss my pitch on how to fix the Monsterverse, as the franchise hasn't quite delivered everything we really want in a big budget kaiju movie, let alone a Godzilla movie made in America. I'm going to cover everything from rewriting the human characters, adding a more consistent tone and vision to better connect all the films in a singular vision, adding more compelling narrative, adding stronger focus on the expanded lore established in the films, tie-in novels, comic books, etc., as well as fixing the kaiju themselves. This is part 2 of 2 of my critiques of the Monsterverse. Before I go into how I would fix the Monsterverse, there are a few things to note. First of all, while I was making part 1, my channel hit over 400 subscribers, which is insane. Thank you everyone for subscribing to my channel, it really does mean a lot to me. This two part video project you can say is technically my 400 sub special, and none of this would have happened without you guys. So thank you for subscribing. With all that said, let's get into this. It's time to answer the question, how would I fix the Monsterverse? I've already talked about my issues with all the four films in my previous video, so what I'll do in this video is go over the same points I've made, but here I'll discuss my pitch in fixing every single issue. The human characters, the stories, the universe consistency, the Toho tradition, and the kaiju themselves. Today I'm going to go over all that by rewriting or giving my pitch on how they could have improved the Monsterverse by a landslide. I will limit it only to the four current films of the Monsterverse. With that out of the way, let's get started. The first thing I would fix is the human characters of the Monsterverse. Introduce us to a set of characters from the beginning of the franchise whom we get attached to and get invested in as they grow, develop, interact with other characters, have clear goals, strengths, and weaknesses, all of which will make them feel more human. For example, Godzilla 2014's main protagonist will now be Joe Brody instead of Ford Brody. The other main characters are Ishido Zarazawa, Vivian Graham, William Stanton, I'll even mention Ren Zarazawa, but not a proper introduction yet. Ellie Brody is a minor character. I believe that the Justice characters is enough for us to get behind as we get to see them interact with each other, grow and change throughout the story, deal with their weaknesses, and all of that is perfectly interconnected with the kaiju action, as these characters are scientists, soldiers, and monarch members trying to stop the world going into chaos. Imagine if these characters interacted with the Russells, Eileen Chan, Alan Jonah, O. James Conrad, or Houston Brooks. Speaking of which, this brings me to King of the Monsters. I'll keep the Russell family, Dr. Eileen Chan, and Alan Jonah, while the rest of the human characters of King of the Monsters are removed entirely. No more gonorrhea jokes, no Dr. Stanton, and all these other characters we don't need, gone. Alan Jonah is the one and only villain of King of the Monsters. Emma Russell being the villain was not only stupid, but it was confusing as it made us hard to sympathize with her. That's not in my version. Sure, she gets manipulated, but in small little ways that would affect Monarch, not the whole world. Alan Jonah, on the other hand, is given a bigger role as the villain of the Monsters. I'll even make him the Heath Ledger's Joker of the Monsters, as both are ruthless, charismatic terrorists who just want to watch the world burn, and try to prove a point of how corrupt and destructive humans really are. Now, I did forget to mention the cast of Kong Skull Island. I'm fine with how they were in the final movie, in particular, Lieutenant Colonel Person Packard and Lieutenant Hank Marlowe. They were the closest to feel like they had actual character arcs, personality, and goals. Everyone else, I would give them more personality, clear goals, meaningful interactions, and scenes that would really show their humanity, for better and for worse. Finally, we get to Godzilla vs. Kong. Right out of the gate, I'll remove all the human characters, except for Gia, as the Godzilla vs. Kong human characters add a little to nothing to the plot. After two movies worth of buildup, Renzo Rizawa is finally given time to shine as the villain, as his unstable relationship with his father, hatred for the titans, has motivated him to tear apart Monarch and kill Godzilla with Mechagodzilla, alongside Alan Jonah. Monarch is trying to uncover the Apex Conspiracy as personal sacrifices happen along the way. In my opinion, this would have fixed the human characters of the Monsterverse, just focusing on a handful of characters introduced from the beginning of the franchise, played by both relatively unknown actors and well-known actors who are given compelling character arcs, goals, weaknesses, and personalities, all of which would add so much more investment in the characters of the Monsterverse, and would make the movies have much more depth and weight to them. Of course, not every character needs to demand as a backstory or have Shakespearean complexity, but just writing them better, having a set of main characters introduced from the start, like in the OT Star Wars, the Harry Potter films, or even Godzilla the series, would give us characters who we can relate to, see the vulnerability in them, and what drives them to be involved in the kaiju plotline as they change the course of the story. One of the many problems that lies in the storytelling of the Monsters is the lack of stakes, tension, suspense, and how formulaic the plot structures are with no real character growth or investment in the story. The Monsters need stories that we can invest in, either by taking risks, giving us actual stakes, making them non-linear, or subvert a lot of the usual tropes we expect in a Godzilla movie. There is a saying that plot comes from a character, so even if the plot of the Monsters movies isn't anything too crazy, we can at least invest in the characters, but the Monsters hasn't quite succeeded in that yet. Now, how would I fix all this? 
I mentioned before that my version of the MonsterVerse has a set of characters who consistently show up in every installment of this franchise. Imagine if Joe Brody survived and got to interact with Ichiro Zerizawa and saw Godzilla and the other Titans. Better yet, imagine if Rin Zerizawa and his father's conflict was developed better in Godzilla vs Kong, and he actually got to pilot Mega Godzilla instead of just dying in an anticlimactic way. Our investment in the characters and plot will be stronger as we see them change and grow, as well as affecting the plot. Another thing I would fix: not every MonsterVerse movie has to have city destruction. With the exception of Kong Skull Island, every MonsterVerse movie has its finale set in the city, and we barely shed a tear or even care about the cities being wrecked, as we've seen it all before, and it lacks investment on a story and character level. Having the stories told in creative ways rather than the same formulaic plot structures used in millions of times already would make the audience engage more with the storytelling and the characters. Lastly, I would expand the mythos of the MonsterVerse. The Hollow Earth has so much to offer in terms of the lore and mythos of this universe that you've only scrapped the tip of the iceberg. I feel like you could have set both Godzilla, King of the Monsters and Godzilla vs Kong in the Hollow Earth. It is so much more interesting to explore the home of the Titans, rather than sticking to city fights. As much as I hate King of the Monsters, one of the things it did right was expanding the Monsters by adding new Titans and monsters and making the universe feel grander in scale. Even the comic books and tie-in novels have done a good job of showing us more of this universe. The Hollow Earth is incredibly vast as it opens the door for so many possibilities to tell new stories that dive deeper into the Titans, the ancient civilizations, a man's prehistoric connection with these godlike beings, etc. Or better yet, have a movie that's set in ancient times Times that shows us all of this. It would be a great departure from the usual modern day military versus kaiju set in cities that we've seen so many times. I feel like a good balance between plot and characters, as well as delivering on the kaiju spectacle, either in the city or in ancient times, would vastly improve the quality of the films. I've said this before and I'll say it again, the MonsterVerse needs a consistent tone. Godzilla 2014 and Kong Skull Island both establish a more grounded, naturalistic tone that portrays Kong and Godzilla with a sense of realism that unfortunately both King of the Monsters and Godzilla vs Kong threw out with a more sci-fi, over-the-top, Showa-esque tone with futuristic tech, aliens, and mecha. At this point, you can't really go back to the tone we saw in Godzilla 2014 since Legendary and Wonder Brothers set it in a direction that would be difficult to course correct. If, however, I were to fix the tone of the monsters from the beginning, it would go like this. Godzilla 2014 establishes the more grounded, naturalistic tone that is then carried over throughout the rest of the monsterverse. But my version of Godzilla 2014 also sets a future element, such as a brief mention of Skull Island, the OSS Argo, the Auction Destroyer, Mecha Godzilla all being built, and the other Titans Monarch has discovered. All of that done through a post credit scene. Kong Skull Island, which takes place in 1973, would include blueprints for the USS Argo, the Auction Destroyer, and Mecha Godzilla, as well as the post credit scene that sets up Rodan, Mothra, and Ghidorah. This way, Godzilla 2014 and Kong Skull Island not only established the grounded, realistic tone that is consistent across the next two films, it also sets up the universe properly, while still being standalone movies. In my version of King of the Monsters, it would be helmed by Gareth Edwards, who now has a foundation to really build up from the first two entries and learn from his mistakes, while Doherty helps in expanding the lore and mythos. King of the Monsters and Godzilla vs. Kong still retain the crazy sci-fi tech, the three-headed alien hydra from space, and the hollow earth, but it's all done through the tone and aesthetics of the Gareth Edwards Godzilla. One of the things that makes Gareth's film so unique in the MonsterVerse is that the kaiju legit feel like massive creatures with a real sense of size and weight. All the shots were filmed as if it were achieved in real life. Even Kong had some of that as well, though not to the same degree. This is something that King of the Monsters and Godzilla vs. Kong lack, as the kaiju moved away too fast and too much like men in suits with no sense of size and weight. Another thing was how good the CGI the physics and direction was in G14. King of the Monsters on the other hand was a mixed bag. The visuals at times were beautiful, but other times it was really ugly, visually muddled, and way too saturated and washed out. The cinematography slash direction was poor, and it almost reminded me of Joss's League. To summarize my section on the universe consistency, I would give the MonsterVerse a consistent tone on a direction of at least one or two filmmakers. Not all the movies have to be dark and serious, and yes, you can still add aliens, mecha, and sci-fi tech, but it's interpreted through the prism of the 2014 Godzilla movie by Gareth Edwards and Jordan Roberts' Kong Skull Island, giving the monsters a real sense of size and weight, as well as each movie containing an element that sets up future movies under a consistent tone, which would unify all the MonsterVerse movies to a singular vision that would improve the continuity and overall would just make the movies feel like they're in the same universe rather than being standalone entries directed by four different filmmakers. Speaking of the filmmakers, the four current directors that have crafted the monsters with their respective films each have their own unique directorial style. Gareth is atmospheric and Spielberg-like. Jordan is lighthearted and quirky with some gravitas. Doherty is grand in scale and fantasy, while Wingard is neon lights and horror-based. On their own, each four directors have had their own unique styles and tone, and they essentially have a knack for visuals, but it doesn't seem like they're qualified on or experienced enough to helm a $100 million plus kaiju blockbuster movie. As I've said in my last video, I would like to see directors who not only have a flair for visuals, but have experience in writing and directing big budget blockbusters. Busters. Directors like J.J. Abrams, Guillermo del Toro, Steven Spielberg, James Wan, Peter Jackson, or even Tim Burton. Each of these directors have a good to great resumes, and their films have kaiju elements. J.J. Abrams was the producer for Cloverfield and directed Super 8, both of which feel like old school giant monster movies. 
with a sense of mystery. Steven Spielberg, James Wan, and Tim Burton technically have never directed a kaiju movie, but their films have giant monster movie elements. Aquaman has giant monsters, sea creatures, and kaiju-esque action. Spielberg has cited Godzilla as inspiration for both Jaws and Jurassic Park. Meanwhile, Ready Player One, a, a movie that he directed, based on the 2011 book, had Mechagodzilla. I'm honestly surprised he's never done a kaiju movie in the same way as Jurassic Park or Jaws. I would like to see Tim Burton direct a Godzilla movie. I like his gothic fantasy and horror aesthetics. You see a lot in his filmography, and you can imagine him doing a kaiju movie like that. Next up, Peter Jackson. He's no stranger to both fantasy creatures, monsters, and he's done the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the 2005 King Kong remake, and the disappointing but alright Hobbit trilogy. Finally, there's Guillermo del Toro. Out of all the directors I've mentioned, I would say he's the most likely to do a Godzilla movie. He's done fantasy, horror, sci-fi, grounded realism, and of course, Pacific Rim, one of the best kaiju movies of all time. If you ask me, Del Toro should do a Godzilla movie, maybe if the MonsterVerse and Pacific Rim crossover. With that said, those are the filmmakers that I believe could helm a big budget kaiju slash Godzilla movie, while still giving the universe a consistent tone that unifies all the films. This isn't to say Edwards, Von Roberts, and Wingert can't do a big studio film, and I appreciate what they contributed to the two biggest movie monster franchises. They just don't seem qualified or fit to write and direct a big budget blockbuster when they are inexperienced or have indie backgrounds. Dear Legendary Warner Brothers, please stop copying the Toho films and catering to just a fan base. That's what's holding the monsters back from being great. They're just trying to be faithful to the Toho tradition when you're eliminating so many creative possibilities for these films to be refreshing and original in their own right. Let's also not forget this. Just because the Toho films has had goofy and ca campy tone with terrible characters, that doesn't justify lackluster effort on behalf of what makes a good Godzilla movie. Especially when two-thirds of the Godzilla movies from Toho have been pretty bad or just mediocre. So why should Legendary Warner Brothers repeat the exact same mistakes Toho made just because they want to pander to the hardcore fans and the purists as well as being faithful to the old movies at the expense of something new and better? Here's how it would fix it. The MonsterVerse is original, not only in character design but also in the storytelling, and it can be faithful to the Toho films without pandering to the hardcore fans or just relying on fan service and recreating classic scenes or things in the Godzilla franchise that we've seen millions of times already. All of that is done within the prism of new and exciting stories, fun and well-rounded characters, and a consistent tone that balances realism with fantasy, and respect to the Toho films without relying on nostalgia or callbacks that gets more degrading. There is no excuse for the MonsterVerse to be like the show era, when that era is made of mostly bad movies, which don't get me wrong, they do have their charm and are fun and entertaining, but aren't good by today's standards. I believe you can make a Godzilla movie that's not only a great kaiju movie, but has a captivating story, incredible human characters, and manages to be original with still being faithful, especially when other movies have done just that. You can gain a new audience while keeping the old fans. Put in the effort and thought so you can finally get great movies again. My last point that can fix the MonsterVerse is fixing the Kaiju slash Titans themselves. We know we come to see these movies for the monsters themselves, but honestly I feel like they aren't given enough for them to live up to their full potential. I'm fine with how the Mutos and the Skull Island creatures were handled, but I feel like the actual Toho Kaiju from Godzilla, Rodia, and Mothra, Ghidorah to Mega Godzilla should have been handled better. I've already went into great detail about why I think King of the Monsters underused Rodia, Mothra, and Ghidorah, but to sum up things here, Godzilla should have been the focus of his first solo outing, not be focused on the Mutos, and they should have taken creative liberties into exploring his character more, or even set it in ancient times to flesh out his rivalry with the Mutos, Ghidorah, and Kong more. Speaking of which, Rodan, Mothra, and Ghidorah should have been the focus of King of the Monsters. Remove the other titans of King of the Monsters since the whole Titan Apocalypse slotline felt unearned and like an afterthought. Removing that would allow for the three Toho Kaiju to shine better as characters. Honestly, Rodan, Mothra, and Ghidorah deserve better. They should have gotten either more screen time or solo movies to establish their characters before coming together in King of the Monsters. Personally, I would change the designs of these three. Fans act like these designs are perfect when they are not. They are just slight revamps on the classic designs with different body structures and skin texture. I understand that they want to remain close to the Toho creations, but not too close. You always want to do something very different and new, while still keeping the spirit of the original work. What I'm trying to say is that give the Toho Kaiju new and original designs that are very different yet familiar, because the actual designs aren't that different, creative or original. It feels lazy and uninspiring to just copy the Toho designs in fear that you'll piss off a lot of fans. 2014 Godzilla and Kong both establish a more grounded, naturalistic approach with their titular characters and the other creatures. Finally, don't make them overly expressive. It's okay for them to emote and show emotion, though not to the point where it humanizes the Titans. I'm I'd prefer to be more subtle. I don't mind the kaiju having personality. After all, they are characters too, but you shouldn't make them too expressive as it'll come off as cartoony and cringe-inducing since you're trying to humanize giant creatures of nature that are not human. Godzilla 2014 and Kong Skull Island both managed to give Godzilla and Kong enough personality and ability to emote while still feeling like giant animalistic monsters, something I feel like King of the Monsters went a little too far in the other direction. Finally, there's Mecha Godzilla. Great design, great interpretation, but needed more setup on a storytelling character and thematic level to justify his existence in the Monsterverse instead of just being a final boss for a Godzilla and Kong to team up against. Finally, there's a new Titans of the Monsterverse. I like the addition of new kaiju as it helps expand the franchise. However, instead of wasting them in a subplot that feels tacked on or in tie-in novels that are just excuses to make up for mediocre storytelling, 
compelling, I would utilize the new Titans in a Monarch inspired TV show like Marvel's Agents of Shields or save them for a Destroy a Monsters X finale or even show them in a prequel film set thousands of years ago so they can feel like they're a natural part of the monster's mythology and lore instead of just being cannon fodder, filler, or just last minute additions. I believe that by focusing each movie on individual kaiju instead of cramming them all to set up future movies, not making them overly expressive that'll destroy the fact that they are still giant animalistic creatures and giving them enough screen time and focus will improve the role each titan slash kaiju has in the storytelling and world building of the monsterverse. To summarize all the things I've said that can help the monsterverse, the human characters need to be well written, well defined, with clear goals, strengths, and weaknesses, and changed throughout the series, as well as being played by a relatively unknown actors instead of well known actors whose talents are wasted and underutilized. You can have a few well known actors in these roles, but it's preferable to have unknown actors playing well written, well rounded characters that have appeared from the beginning of the franchise to the end, as we get invested in their characters who grow, change, and bounce off each other, as well as tying well with the plot of the kaiju. I covered over what the films read need on a storytelling level to keep the audiences engaged as the stories should have real stakes, tension, originality, twists and turns nobody can see coming, and are simple yet complex. The stories in the monsterverse haven't been that compelling, and do lack the sense of dread, tension, and terror that's needed in a monster movie, especially when some of Toho's very own films such as Gojira, The Return of Godzilla, Godzilla vs. Destroya, Shin Godzilla, and even Godzilla vs. Hedora actually had real stakes, tension, and went against what we come to expect in a kaiju movie. The Monsterverse needs a consistent tone to unify all the films into a singular vision, have one filmmaker oversee each film so that they maintain the set of rules and tone established in the very first film. You can still add aliens, futuristic technology, and mecha, but it has to be bounded by the rules and tone set up in the first film. Other film franchises like the MCU, the Heisei Godzilla era films, the Harry Potter films, the Alien and Predator franchises, or even trilogies like the Back to the Future trilogy, the Dark Knight trilogy, Lord of the Rings trilogy, Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy, or even the four Indiana Jones films managed to stick to a consistent tone, vision, and style, which helps ground the films to feel like they're in the same universe, even as they got wackier and crazier, something the MonsterVerse could have done, but it didn't. I also went over how it would handle the Titans, big and small, from Godzilla, the Mutos, Kong, the Skull Island creatures, Rodan, Mothra, Ghidorah, Mechagodzilla, and all the new Titans. Each Titan plays an important role in the MonsterVerse. Not a single one is filler, wasted, or underused, as the MonsterVerse we got underused Rodan, Mothra, Ghidorah, and Mechagodzilla, and the original Titans created by Legendary are mostly filler. I dive deeper into the mythology and lore of the MonsterVerse, as my version of the MonsterVerse is set in both the past and present, going back and forth between the Hollow Earth and the real world, which gives the universe a richer attention to detail in its world building. Finally, I covered over how the MonsterVerse shouldn't ape the Toho films too much, and instead should be its own thing, that while it respects the duration of the Toho Godzilla movies, it does it without resorting to obnoxious fan service every five minutes, or copying every single thing Toho already did, especially when most Godzilla movies from Toho aren't exactly very good or have aged very well. I went over what film directors are fit to home a Godzilla slash kaiju movie in this franchise since they actually have experience writing and directing big budget blockbusters, unlike these guys. They don't need to be mega fans of the genre, but they should at least be familiar enough that they can do a good job at directing a big budget Godzilla movie made in America. This was my pitch slash how to fix section of this two part video project, expressing both my frustrations with the MonsterVerse franchise, both on the films themselves and on certain fans who praise the MonsterVerse without acknowledging the criticisms. In this video, I covered everything I would fix in the MonsterVerse, from rewriting the human characters, adding the universe a consistent tone and a unified vision, rewriting the storylines to be more compelling, separating the MonsterVerse from the Toho films, who should direct the MonsterVerse, and how I would handle the kaiju slash titans. This was a two-part video project I wanted to share in the wake of Godzilla vs Kong's release. Hopefully something in these two videos made you see the MonsterVerse in a different way, even if you disagree with me. I just hope that you can see where I'm coming from when I say I don't like the MonsterVerse as much as I used to, and how I would fix the MonsterVerse. I wanted to share this not only to voice my opinions, but also to open the eyes of other G fans out there, who are stuck in the mentality of, who cares about the plot, characters, and consistency, all we need are kaiju fights, when they are missing the point. Just because Godzilla King the Monsters and Godzilla vs Kong gave you everything you supposedly wanted in the Godzilla film, doesn't mean it is good. People in the fandom should not use the excuse that kaiju fights is all that matters, or Legendary should stay true to Toho because that is not how we get good films in the franchise, and it shows a poor understanding in the fandom of what makes a good movie. Not everything has to be like the Toho Godzilla films. As I've said before, a good portion of them are not good and have aged poorly. You can still have great kaiju action mixed with an intriguing story and captivating characters. You can still stay true to the spirit of the Toho films, but it has to be perfectly balanced. But it's unfortunate that a lot of people in the fandom don't ask for quality Godzilla movies and instead want whatever appeals to them. I know it sounds like I'm being harsh, but as I said in the last video, I do care about the franchise. I believe we as Godzilla fans deserve far better films than the ones we have right now. And I still yearn for that amazing Godzilla slash kaiju movie that'll put the MonsterVerse to shame. 
This concludes part two of two of my critiques of the MonsterVerse. Hopefully you enjoyed listening to all the things I wanted to share about my dislike on the MonsterVerse, as well as my pitch on how to fix the MonsterVerse. This video took me almost the same amount of time to make as the first part. Regardless if you agree or disagree with my opinions, hopefully you at least understood all the points I've made. At the end of the day, I still respect and appreciate the MonsterVerse, the four directors behind the four films that currently make up the cinematic universe, and I have my fingers crossed that maybe future filmmakers will watch my videos so that they'll get an idea of how to improve the MonsterVerse. But what do you think? Do you agree with my pitch on fixing the MonsterVerse? What are your ideas on how to fix the cinematic universe? Would you want the MonsterVerse to continue or end with the Godzilla vs Kong? And what is your favorite film of this franchise? Let me know in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel, and share this video to help my channel grow. And as always, long live the kings.